spacecraft is getting very close to the moon now, and you'll see the uh, target point in the uh, shattered region toward the center of the imagery. Uh, that is Cabeus, with the uh, crater rim and the mountainous region there on the top, uh, causing a shadow that uh, spreads over a, a portion of the crater floor. The Centaur will be targeting that uh, shadowed region, where we suspect uh, ice is most likely to uh, to reside. With the image that's being shown now, uh, you'll see kind of uh, the central large crater there with a small crater at its top. Um, the Centaur is expected to impact on the left part of the, uh, the large shadow. Flight, two minutes to Centaur impact, and we are one minute to start of MBM sequence two and payload flash mode. The uh, shadowed region to the bottom left of that small crater at, on the rim of Cabeus is our targeted impact point. Rusty uh, Hunt, the flight director, announced uh, earlier that uh, NVM Sequence 2 would be running soon. That is the flash sequence, uh, the beginning of the science sampling sequence that governs the remainder of the observation. All stations flight mark, 60 seconds to send our impact. We start of NVM Sequence 2. We've just started Sequence 2. This is flash mode now. Uh, this will run from one minute prior to impact. Flight payload confirm Sequence 2 start through three seconds after the expected impact. We'll then switch to curtain mode, which will last for three minutes. And then the final minute uh, before the shepherding spacecraft impact will be called Flight, crater mode. Flight, science. Please change NIR1 to OPR9. Over. Copy NIR1 to OPR9. Command flight, set it up. Is that November or Mike? November. Science flight confirmed November. that's November. November. IR. We are, uh, the science team is now communicating to the flight team to uh, adjust some camera science levels. Science flight confirmed near infrared, November, correct? On Confirm. The near infrared uh, camera. Off send, NIR 1 to OPR 9. Copy, sending command. All stations flight, mark Centaur impact. That was an announcement by the flight director that the uh, center impact should have. Uh, flight pillar confirm receipt of uh, command over. Flight payload curtain start over. Copy that payload. We should be looking for uh, some signs of the impact on the leftmost part Man, of the. Standing uh, by with mid infrared changes. The left side of the shadow, right below the uh, the dimpled crater on the crater, the larger crater rim. Flight, this is science. Make the rate changes. MIR one, one hertz. MIR two, zero point one hertz. Over. Copy science command flight, MIR-1 to 1 hertz. Sending MIR-1 at 1 hertz. And the science team is directing the flight team to adjust the uh, sampling rate of some of the instruments to fit within the 1 megahertz. Uh, Ready with MIR-2 at 0.2, at 0.1. The 1 megahertz signal limit. 
Go flight. Command flight, send MIR 2, 0.1 hertz. MIR 2, 0.1 hertz, sending command. Flight confirm receipt of command, over. Copy that, payload. All stations flight one minute to transition to DV mode. Transition to DV mode, which is Delta V mode, actually is a uh, control mode for the spacecraft. It allows us to slew much more quickly uh, to continue pointing at the uh, suspected uh, Centaur impact point, even though the, uh, the shepherding spacecraft will be impacting a couple of kilometers away. This is the last minute uh, before the shepherding spacecraft also impacts the surface of the moon and the last minute of flight. We're watching the remaining few seconds of uh, the LCROSS mission as we uh, approach very rapidly the surface of uh, the Cabeus crater. Mark, transition Flight. to DV mode. Flight, Flight NIR2, OPR change request. NIR2 to OPR 10, over. Is that November? Copy. NIR2 to OPR yes, 10. Yes, confirmed. November. Ready? Command Flight, send November IR2 to OPR 10. Command sent. Flight payload, confirm receipt of command. Copy, payload. These are Standby the for shepherding spacecraft impact. The very last seconds of the uh, shepherding spacecraft trajectory as it approaches the lunar surface. We are seeing very small craters within the we, crater. We confirm a thermal signature of the crater. Our mid our cameras, over. Copy science. We just All received light shepherding s spacecraft impact. Stations report LOS. The uh, ground stations at Goldstone just reported Last a Last track is 11.35.35.054 seconds. The shepherding spacecraft has hit the surface of the moon, and this marks the end of the LCROSS uh, flight mission. Okay, all stations flight. Great job. First step 179, uh, complete closeout of your flight products and get them on MDPS. Well, Michael, I wonder if you could give us your impressions of, uh, of what we just saw and, and uh, mission success. Well, it's hard to tell what we saw there. Uh, I'm, not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure if the gain was uh, set there uh, correctly or what. Um, we had some uh, confirmation uh, from the mock that uh, they did uh, have a thermal signature. Yeah. Um, I should mention that uh, the nine instruments on the trailing spacecraft, the LCROSS spacecraft, were exercised on the way to the, to the moon. In fact, we took images on the way and images of the Earth, so we're confident the, uh, the instruments performed as expected. 
Uh, at the time of the impacts, the uh, mothership, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or sister ship, I should say, was uh, about 50 kilometers overhead. They will have their first, and so they should have been uh, seeing this with their suite of instruments. Uh, they do their first data downlink in about uh, two hours or so. So we hope to have the data, and I expect we will be receiving both uh, imaging data and spectroscopic data from the host of ground-based observatories probably within the next few hours. I think it is fair to say that uh, within this uh, $79 million cost cap, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the experiment had been optimized to produce the largest possible impact plume. And so I remain confident that uh, this is our best opportunity to date to measure the extent of water ice on the moon. So what we're seeing here is a replay of that impact. Let's watch it for a little bit. Now, even though there were nine instruments on the trailing LCROSS spacecraft, which you see going in here, uh, they basically break into three categories. There was something called a flash radiometer which uh, should have uh, seen the uh, flash and uh, by virtue of analyzing that signal we can make some inferences about the depth of the regolith and it's uh, the makeup of the dirt as it were that were th was thrown up by the centaur impact. Right, so then, brighter flash means you know hit rock or, and dimmer means it uh, hit dirt essentially. Right, and actually you would want a uh, dim flash here because that uh, is suggestive that you hit sandy material and you want to throw up as much of that as possible and that's easier to throw up than uh, boulders. Then there's a suite of cameras, visible, near-infrared, mid-infrared, that provide information uh, once we analyze the signal, uh, once we analyze the data on the shape of the ejecta cloud, which contains both regolith and uh, hopefully water vapor. Uh, it tells us about the dust grain properties in the ejecta cloud and provides spatial context for the uh, spectrometers. And then finally, there is the suite of uh, spectrometers. Uh, and most of the information, much of the valuable information, will come out of the near-infrared spectrometer, which uh, provides uh, uh, analysis of the chemical composition of the vapor in the regolith and uh, any possible hydrated minerals. Here, Michael, we're, we've just brought up the uh, thermal IR. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I wonder if you uh, could comment a little bit on Well, the, uh, the blue areas are the cooler regions, and so the green and the red are increasingly warm regions, and so you can imagine the sun being uh, beating down on the south rim of that crater. That's why it's showing up as red. This is all false color, of course. Uh, and, of course, we're aiming for the blue region, uh, which is the uh, permanently shadowed region here. The reason you have this many instruments is uh, we're trying to tease out, uh, particularly with spectrometers, the way I like to phrase it to people, is we break light into its uh, color constituents, and then we look for li little squiggles superimposed on big squiggles. Yes. And uh, the little squiggles are hopefully the signatures of water, and uh, other hydrated minerals. The big squiggles are just the electronic noise in the cameras. And so even though the data will become available to us in the next few hours from uh, the other uh, orbiting and ground-based assets, I anticipate it will take a couple of days before we can calibrate out the big squiggles and, and, and get into the, uh, the uh, little squiggles. And we want to have some redundancy in the instrumentation. That's why we have multiple instruments looking at slightly different wavelengths. So the whole idea here is to collect as much data as you can and minimize any ambiguity in the interpretations as you try to analyze those small squiggles. Well, we have redundancy not only on, on uh, LCROSS, but of course with all the ground assets right. from the Earth, the Hubble, um, and LRO, like you mentioned. As we begin to collect the data and we analyze it, if we don't find water, is that a significant finding in itself? It is, uh, because of the reasons I stated earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, and that is because the experiment has been carefully designed to maximize the uh, uh, amount of material thrown up. That's by the uh, massive impactor. It is the largest impactor we have uh, utilized on the lunar surface. And by the uh, impact angle, we went in at an impact angle of over 80 degrees, so it's basically straight on. And so if we do have a negative uh, signal when we uh, finish analyzing the data in the next few days, it means one of three things. First of all, there may be no water on the moon. 
although that would seem to contravene the announcement made a few weeks ago right. from the other spacecraft. So that leaves two possibilities. It means there may be water concentrations, but it's at less than the half a percent sensitivity of LCROSS, which has ramifications, uh, potential ramifications on the ability to extract that as a resource. And the third possibility is that the water in the permanently, the frozen water in the permanently shadowed regions is not uniformly distributed, but rather is in patches and like uh, an old uh, Texas uh, wildcatter, we may have hit a dry hole rather yes. than a wet <laughs> hole. Right. So that's part of the reason we uh, sent the Centaur impactor and the following LCROSS uh, spacecraft on separate tra trajectories at the end so they would impact two possible points. I can say that uh, regardless of the results of this experiment, whether we have detected water, water or whether we have established an upper limit uh, through a null result, uh, the results will help advance our knowledge by constraining the current models or explanations uh, pertaining to uh, the moon. Uh, like all scientific discovery, uh, it rules out some explanations. It may advance the likelihood of others. That's just the normal process of scientific discovery and advancing our understanding of the universe. So all, all indications are that the instruments were working and, uh, and no matter what we find, it's going to be important. Uh, indeed. I should mention, too, that part of the reason it's going to take us a few days to uh, tease out the right answer here is because uh, we are, if you return to my uh, 